This question asks us, like the previous one, to complete and balance this redox reaction uh, under basic conditions. How in the world do we do that under basic conditions? Well, I talked about in an earlier video that there are two separate ways of doing this. One is under acidic conditions, as I showed the previous example, and the other is under basic conditions. Let's go back to our electrolytes and see if we can review what the steps are for doing this with basic conditions. The first step says, first, follow steps one through three for balancing a redox reaction under acidic conditions. So what the heck are those steps? Steps one through three? Well, let's go back to the electrolyte and see those. So step one of acidic conditions says, divide the original redox reaction into two half reactions, one for oxidation and the other for reduction. Now let's see if we can pick that out. This might be a little bit trickier than the previous example, but I think we can still do it. I'm going to begin by looking at the manganese here. Manganese stuck to a bunch of oxygen. Oxygens pretty much always, except for when you're dealing with O2 or a hydrogen peroxide. O2 here has an oxidation number of zero, hydrogen peroxide oxygen here has an oxidation number of negative one. Pretty much all the rest of the time it's got an oxidation number of negative two. So each of those oxygens has an oxidation number of negative two, and there are four of them. So because I've got four oxygens, each with an oxidation number of number, number of negative two, the overall negative charge I'm dealing with here is negative eight. The overall charge for this whole ion is negative one. So manganese must have an oxidation number that when added to negative eight leaves behind negative one. What is that oxidation number? Yeah, you guessed it, it's positive seven. Now let's compare that to manganese over here to the right. <clears throat> On the right side of the equation, I've got two oxygens each presumably for the same reason with it having an oxidation number of negative two, but there are two of them. So the overall negative charge that I have to deal with is negative four. The overall charge of this entire thing is zero. It doesn't have a charge up here. So manganese has to be a number that when added to negative four gives me zero. That number is of course going to be positive four. You'll notice that manganese changes from a plus seven to a plus four going left to right. It's gone from being a plus seven to a plus four. That means it's becoming more negative. It's, how do you become more negative? Well, you have to gain electrons. So I gain electrons. How do I become more negative or how do I gain electrons? I gain electrons by being reduced. So this manganese is indeed reduced. So I'm going to go ahead and write out my two half reactions. <clears throat> I've got my oxidation and I've got my reduction. My reduction is going to be just the two manganese species, MnO4 minus, converting into MnO2. There we go, that is the reduction half reaction. The oxidation by default is whatever's left. So I've got cyanide being turned into CnO minus. That is step one. Now let's take a look at step two. What does it say? Well, it says, balance each half reaction by doing the following in this order. The first thing says, balance elements other than hydrogen and oxygen. Let's turn back to both of these species and see if we can do that. Looking at this thing, I've got carbon and nitrogen, carbon and nitrogen, they're all balanced. I'm looking at, once again, everything that isn't hydrogen or oxygen. Now I'll look at this manganese thing. I've got manganese here and I've got manganese here. They're all balanced. I'm ignoring the oxygens. So that step is pretty much done. Now we'll look at the next step. The next step says balance oxygen atoms by adding H2O where needed. Returning here then, you'll notice that I've got four oxygen atoms on the left. I've got two oxygen atoms on the right. How can I compensate for that? I need to add, obviously, two more oxygen atoms on the right. So I can do that by adding two molecules of water. Now I've got four total oxygens on the right, four on the left. Now I'll go up here. I've got an oxygen on the right. I don't have any oxygens on the left. So I'm going to have to add one molecule of water. Now my oxygens are balanced. Oxygens all look good. Now let's return to the next step. The next step says balance hydrogen atoms by adding H plus as needed. So let's return to this. You'll notice that because I just added H2O, I've now added a bunch of hydrogens. I've got two hydrogens on the left of this. In order to balance out the hydrogen atoms, I'm going to have to add two H pluses to the right side. Now my hydrogen atoms are balanced in that first equation. Down here at this bottom one, I've got four additional hydrogen atoms on the right. I balance that out by throwing down four H pluses on the left. Now I've got all of the correct number of hydrogen atoms on both the left and the right of both of these half reactions. Let's return to our list of instructions. The next step says, balance charges by adding electrons as needed. Going back up here then, let's see if we can figure that out. Mm. What is the overall charge up here on the left side? 
I've got a negative 1 right here, and that's pretty much it. What about on the right side? Well, I've got a negative 1, and then I've got two additional H pluses, so I've got negative 1 plus 2 leaves me a plus 1 charge on the right. I need these to be balanced out, which means that I'm going to have to add some electrons here to the right side to get it down to negative 1 on the left. So if I add two electrons, that is going to, uh, yeah, I think that's going to leave me with an overall charge on the right side of negative 1. So now my charges are all balanced out. Let's do the same thing for the left and right sides of the bottom equation here. So I've got 4H pluses, which is a positive 4. I've got 1 negative 1. I add those together, that's going to be a plus 3 on the left side of the equation. Over here on the right side of the equation, this has no charge, this has no charge, that is a 0. So I need to get these two things to balance out. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to have to add electrons to the left side to get the left side down to 0. How many electrons do I have to add? Well, yeah, you guessed it. I have to add 3 electrons. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I haven't left myself very much room, so I'll make some alterations here. I'll write 3 electrons plus my 4H pluses plus my MnO4. Man, I'm going to have to make that smaller here. Plus my uh, MnO4. Now my total charge on the left side should be 0. I've got 3 electrons, which is a negative 3, plus 4H pluses, so plus 4, and then plus a negative 1. That should all come out to 0, and indeed it does. My charges are now completely balanced on both sides of these half reactions. Now let's look at our next step, step 3. Step 3 says, multiply your half reactions by adding integers wherever needed to make the number of electrons lost in the oxidation step be equal to the number of electrons gained in the reduction step. So I'm going to remove these numbers to sort of make things less confusing and less congested. <clears throat> let's see if we can do this here. In this uh, oxidation step up here, I've lost two electrons. In the reduction step down here, I've gained three electrons. The 2 and the 3, they, they don't really match, so I have to fix that. What numbers can I multiply everything by on each of these steps to get those to match up? Well, the nearest whole number I can do that with is 6. In other words, if I multiply everything up top by 3, that will turn this 2 into a 6. If I multiply everything down bottom by a 2, that will turn this 3 into a 6, and then we'll all be good. Hopefully you're cool with that. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll multiply everything up top by 3. So I have three H2Os, I've got three cyanides, I've got now three CNOs, I've got six H pluses, and I've got six electrons. Now I'll multiply everything down here by two. This three becomes a six, this four becomes an eight, this uh, one becomes a two. I've now got a two in front of that thing, and I now have a four right here. Now I've got six electrons to the right, six electrons to the left, on, on each of these respective reactions, they totally balance out. Now, let's take a look at our next step. So we've gone through 1 through 3, steps 1 through 3 of how to do this with under acidic conditions, but remember, we're doing it under basic conditions. So let's return to our steps on how to do it under basic conditions. Well, the first step says, by the way, uh, to follow steps 1 through 3 for balancing redox reactions under acidic conditions. We've totally done that. So step 2 says, next, for any of your half reactions that have an H plus somewhere, Add the same number of OH minuses to both sides of the equation as you have H pluses. So let's go back to this thing. Do I have H pluses anywhere? Well, yeah, I've totally got H pluses over here. So what it's telling me to do is add as many OH minuses as I've got H pluses to both sides. So in this, in this case here, I'm going to have to add 6 OH minuses to the right. And to make sure everything balances out, I have to add 6 OH minuses to the left. Now that's all good. Now we'll look at the bottom one. Do I have any H pluses anywhere? Yeah, I've got eight H pluses here, so I'm going to have to add eight OH minuses to the left. And to make sure that balances out, I have to also add eight OH minuses to the right. I've now fulfilled that step. Let's continue and see what the next step says I'm supposed to do. The next one says, on any sides of the equation from step two, where there are both H pluses and OH minuses present, replace them with H2Os. Going back here, then, you'll see that I've got 6H pluses, 6OH minuses. If I combine those, they turn into 6H2Os. Similarly, I've got 8H plus and HOH minuses. I add those together, they make 
H2O's. So now I'm done with that step. Let's go on to the next one. The next one says, add your final half reactions together, canceling out everything that's the same on both sides of the final equation, making sure that your atoms are charged and all balanced. So we'll go ahead and do this right here. I'm going to add my oxidation reaction up here to my uh, reduction half reaction down here, <clears throat> making sure everything uh, hopefully works out. So uh, my electrons, by the way, you'll notice I've got six electrons on the right side over here, six electrons on the left. They cancel each other out. Now I've got three H2Os. And, well, actually, I can add this stuff together. I've got three H2Os on the left side of this equation, and I'm adding that to eight H2Os on the left side of this equation. That gives me 11 H2Os here. Now I'll add my uh, three cyanides, and I've got six OH minuses, and now I've got uh, two MnO4s. That is all of the lefties, all of the left stuff things, all added together in a grand left side of the equation. I'm going to put my arrow. Now I'm going to do the same thing with all the stuff on the right side of the equation. I've got three CNO minuses, and I've got this H2 here, and I've got another H2 go there. I had six plus four, that gives me ten H2Os here, and I've got uh, what eight hydroxides. Oh, I almost forgot by the way that I also have to add two MnO2s. Those those are these things right here. Make sure that I bring those down. As you look at this thing, you can see that a couple of things can simplify. I've got 11 H2Os on the left side of the equation. I've got 10 on the right. So if I subtract 10 H2Os from both sides of the equation, that will simplify algebraically. Similarly, I've got 8 hydroxides on the right and 6 hydroxides on the left. I can subtract 6 from both sides of the equation, and that will simplify things. So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll uh, do some further simplification. I take away 10 H2Os from both the right and the left side of the equation. I'm left with 1 H2O on the left. Then I've got 3 cyanides. And then I take away six hydroxides from the left and from the right, and that leaves me with no hydroxides on the left. So I'm just left with two permanganates on the left. That is the left side of the equation. Now on the right side of the equation, I've got my three CNO minuses. I've got my 10 H2Os have been taken away because I subtracted 10 from both sides. I subtracted six from both sides, which leaves me with two hydroxides on the right, and now I've got two MnO2s on the right. So that is my overall equation. What I need to do now is make sure that all the elements and charges are balanced. So I've got two hydrogens on the left. I have two multiplied through is two hydrogens on the right. I have three carbons on the left. I've got three multiplied through is three carbons on the right. I've got three nitrogens on the left, three nitrogens on the right. On the left I've got two manganeses. I've got two manganeses on the right. And now now I'll take a look at the number of oxygens. I've got one here, and I've got two times four is eight. One plus eight is nine oxygens on the left side of the equation. On the right side of the equation, I've got three oxygens plus two oxygens plus two times two is four oxygens. That all adds up to be, yep, nine total oxygens. Now let's see if we can figure out the total overall charge. They should match. I've got a negative 1 multiplied by 3, so I've got a negative 3, and I've got a negative 1 here multiplied by 2. It gives me an overall charge of negative 5 on the left. On the right, I've got a negative 1 multiplied by 3 is a negative 3. Negative 1 multiplied by 2 is a negative 2. That is indeed an overall charge of negative 5. So my atoms all match, and my charges, overall charges on the left and the right, both match. So that is the correct final balanced equation.